Well, welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Another Lunch and Learn session in action right now. Uh, my name is Kenny Jang with Church Butler, and I've got sitting across from me, across the interwebs, we've got my friend Paul Fleming. Great to be with you today, Paul. Hey, it's great to be here. I always love hanging out with you. This is going to be fun. So um, we are um, conference buds, and one of the things that we, I think, immediately resonate with each other is the, the dual nature of our personalities or personas is that we are both practitioners that have worked in the church, right, as ministry staff, and then uh, on the outside consultants or support uh, supporting the ministry and vision of churches out there. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your journey quickly uh, on both sides of that fence? Well, I grew up in the church. I've been around the church a long time. Uh, in fact, my dad was a pastor and a missionary. Um, I spent some time overseas, in fact, um, in churches. So I've been around the church a long time. And uh, when I kind of grew up and figured out what I wanted to do with my life, um, I started a church in Portland, Oregon. In fact, we started on Easter Sunday about 12 years ago and had a great run of that. Did that for about five years. And, Portland, uh, then is, I, that is a spiritual wasteland. It's hard to do a church in there. It's tough, man. It's tough. But it was a, it was a, great, it was a great experience. Had some great relationships we built there. And uh, this church is still going strong and love those people out there. Um, then I moved back to Dallas, started doing a lot of consulting, and uh, also jumped into uh, work at Lake Point Church here in Dallas, a multi-site church here, and became the communications pastor and led a fantastic team of uh, designers and web designers and uh, all kind of people doing all of our communications. And we had a great time, um, and that was a whole different ballgame. So being able to see it on both sides of the spectrum from a church of 300 to a church of 30,000, um, was really enlightening and a great experience for me. Yeah, and what I appreciate the most, though, is that you can empathize with the ministry leaders and staff that are watching this conversation today in a, in a way that um, I think is very practical and tactical. Um, and so I, I love that, uh, always having conversations with you. So today, we're, let's get straight to it for our lunch and learn. We're talking about Easter because it's the countdown to Easter. Um, we are entering March, and um, Easter for this year is April 16th. It's mid-month. Um, it's right smack in the middle, and uh, it's not much time left, but there is actually time for some people to actually lay out a game plan as we go, go down that, what is it, the runway to Easter. So um, you and your group at Church Inc. have put out a, a pretty incredible resource after looking at it. Uh, why don't you share with us exactly just the the whole, the 30,000 foot view of what it is, um, and then we can talk through some of the elements in it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny about Easter, you know, uh, the, the date always changes, right? <laughs> um, with Christmas, you always know when it's happening, uh, but with Easter, you know, every year, sometimes it's early, sometimes it's late, but you know what's true is that something I've discovered is that no matter when it is, if it's early or late, we always seem to be behind, right? <laughs> we're, we're never... Uh, even if it's like this year, April 16th, that's late, but we got a few extra weeks to plan. But I guarantee you there are so many church leaders out there right now just sweating it. Or I have some friends I talked to this week, they haven't even thought about Easter yeah. yet. You know, they're, they're just way behind. So we put together um, a great resource that pulled together two decades of experience working in the church and, and just said, you know, what are the checklists that we need? What are the things that we need to be thinking about? What is our What's our timeline need to be looking like? What are the assets we need to pull together? Uh, and not just, in, of course, we do at Church Inc. a lot of printing and signage, but we started looking at it from the holistic side of um, not just print and signage, but also what it was our social media channels and our website communication channels need to look like. And so it's a great free resource. It's just loaded with uh, some checklists for leaders. Uh, and I might say, you know, it's for churches of all sizes, small churches, large churches, it's a great blueprint. We call it a roadmap, communication roadmap for Easter, and uh, full of great ideas, some tips that we've learned over the years, and we just want to share it with people and help uh, maybe help de-stress this, uh, this time of year a little bit and make it a better experience for them and their community. One of the things I really appreciate about the resource is that you actually share with them, I think it's five specific like milestones or deadlines so that people are keeping pace and understanding where they are in this whole game of getting ready for Easter, right? Why don't you, can you share a little bit about that? Why it's important to stay on top of that? 
Yeah, you know, uh, well, like I said earlier, I mean, we're always behind on it, right? And so uh, it's funny because I threw this out to a few people this week and I just said, hey, guys, it's about eight weeks from Easter right now, uh, this week. And so here's where we need to be. And you could kind of see the collective gasp of people going, what? We haven't even thought about this yet. And so um, I've got five key deadlines that I kind of put together and have used for years that are kind of things like, you know, when do we need to get the concept ready and the theme ready for Easter? And that's maybe 10 weeks out. And then when do we need to start proofing the collateral? And we need to actually get things to print. And when thing, when do we need to actually get the website up? And there's, there's some key deadlines. And in this resource, we, we list out all, all five of them. And uh, we tried to make them generic enough so that no matter when the date is every year, um, it's still true because we put like week markers, two weeks out, four weeks out, six weeks out, eight weeks out. And so um, I would encourage everyone to download it because we're at eight weeks now. And so there's some real key milestones that they need to be at. And my guess is a lot of churches are not there yet. And so we need to kind of probably pick up the pace and get on track. Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the things that I really like about it is that you did break it down into the steps. And then it's basically um, checklist for every single process, right? Whether it's um, communications for your service, stuff for your small group, um, email, social media, things that you have to talk about, your website, signage needs. Signage is one of those like long laundry lists that you just, um, it's hard to just sit down and tackle all at once. And so having those lists and checklists available, I think is just really, really, um, it's a blessing. It's a resource, especially for people who are actually to be quite honest, behind the eight ball and haven't even thought about it yeah. yet. Um, this is kind of like the cliff note version to get you up to speed, right? Yeah, it is. And I mean, let's be honest. It doesn't matter if you're a church of 100 or 10,000. It's just a lot of work. And there's so many moving parts and there's a lot of pieces. And so what we try to do with this resource is go, let's, let's try to make it a little bit more methodical. And in fact, one of the tips that we have at the very end is whatever you do this year for Easter, Go ahead and record that and put in a base camp list so that next year you've already got it. And that's the key, you know, having some kind of checklist where, you know, maybe we give you some ideas, but in your context, you need 30 more things that you need to do or you need 30 things less that you don't need to do. But for your context, you know, put it in base camp and, and have a checklist so that you can pull that up and just kind of methodically go through it and and uh, not feel so stressed because you've already got your list and you're ready to go. And it's also important, I might add, that we kind of put those in order for people. You know, people a lot of times start working on the digital assets, which is fantastic, and they get all excited about that. But they're missing that they've got a print deadline that's coming up, and they've yeah. got to make sure they get that to press first, and then they start working on the other items. And so hopefully the, the resource will kind of help them walk through that a little bit. Yeah, so one of the, I mean, so Church Inc., you guys are obviously in the printing business, um, and we Despite everyone thinking that everything's digital, there's so much to print, right? There's, yeah. um, and it's not just paper; it's it's banners and signage and lawn yeah. signs, etc. Um, one of the, but the one of the deadlines is direct mail. Um, how far in advance are you recommending people actually get stuff to Church Inc. in order to get get that out in time? Yeah, that's a great question. We recommend six weeks. And so um, that gives you some buffer time. You know, most of us as nonprofits, we want the nonprofit pricing with the post office, of course. And so with that, they don't guarantee an exact date of delivery. They kind of give you a three to five day window. And so we like to kind of build some time in for that. So if you can get things off to press six weeks ahead, it gives us some time to kind of, uh, you know, take care of the Murphy law and see if there's something that's not right that needs to be fixed. And uh, then we get it to sent, sent to press and then send it to the post office for delivery. And it gives you plenty of time so that they'll get that about two weeks prior to your service. That's about the sweet spot. Gotcha. So um, if you're thinking direct mail, um, then this is literally this is the time to actually pick up the phone at Church Inc. and um, start that consultation call to, to, to get an idea of what's needed, right? Um, we had another lunch and learn with my friend Paul, uh, Peter Goeski in uh, Hope City, Sarasota. Uh, he's a church planter, and they use direct mail for their launch of the church and fill the house. Um, the, the overwhelming number of people who said on the connection cards that I, I got the information for, about this church through direct mail was actually pretty incredible. Um, yeah. And so I think that's, that's, that's an underutilized 
weapon of choice for church communicators these days, right? Well, it is. And, you know, one thing I say a lot is that um, your offline collateral, such as a mailer, should have one particular goal, and that's to point people online. And so whether it's an invite card or a mailer, uh, the value in that is that they work in tandem with your online assets. And so you're, you're really pushing people to your website with a real easy-to-remember URL, such as yourchurch.com slash Easter, or something really simple. And we're really trying to get people to, into the, the habit of going online to find the information, but maybe that mailer is the way that gets them there. And so we try to connect those dots a little bit. Gotcha. And so talking about some hybrid strategies offline to online, um, do you recommend the call to actions in the actual, say, the postcard or the letter or whatever it might be, the mailer, to go to the homepage of the church? What, what's the URL? Uh, where are you pointing them online? Yeah, that's a great, uh, great question. I think for a big event like Easter, uh, you've got a really fabulous opportunity. And so my recommendation is that you create kind of a more of a landing page that's, and I, I recommend mychurch.com slash Easter, uh, because everyone's going to remember that. Don't put some long URL or some hard to remember, you know, something like that. Just make it really simple. But by doing that, you might be able to share some real specific info about Easter. Um, for instance, some larger churches need people to kind of register for a seat because seating is limited. And uh, that way it doesn't clutter up your homepage and you can share some real specific info about Easter. Um, so that's my recommendation. Um, if you don't have that much content, though, you can always just point them to your uh, homepage. But one of the values of pointing them to like a, 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 sla a directory like slash Easter is you can track your results a little bit better, too. So on your, you know, your Google Analytics, you can kind of see what kind of traction came to that uh, specialized URL. That's really good. Um, and, you know, um, one of the things that I really like about your stuff is that you are able to show people, especially in this, um, this roadmap document, is that there needs to be some cohesiveness of all of your communications, right? There needs to be some consistency in terms of the reception of the message so that it looks the same, whether you see it on screens, whether you see it offline at home in your mailbox, or whether you see it in a flyer in a coffee shop, or if you see it online, um, there needs to be some consistency. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of like you're branding this little micro event for a period of time. And everywhere your your audience looks in your community, they need to kind of go, oh, that's the church that sent me the mail, or oh, you know, and that's the billboard that I saw, or that was my friend that gave me that invite. And so everywhere they look, they need to kind of see those kind of pointers that are directing them to that one central location. Um, and that's just that's just so huge, you know. And um, I think it's also important that that it's a great opportunity for churches to kind of depict the culture of their church in these in these kind of big events like Easter because all the collateral that we're putting out there maybe there's people in your community that um, they, they just have missed you for some reason they, they haven't noticed you and now's a great opportunity to kind of go here's the type of church that we are and um, and I think that's a it's a it's a missed opportunity if we don't kind of bring it all together yeah yeah so uh, one of the uh, tools in the toolbox is lawn signs can you tell us a little bit about how you think people should be utilizing those? Because I don't think people are that creative about it. You know, you see it in elections, the recent election, lawn signs were yeah. all over. You see it even in now nonprofit or fundraisers for charities, for bikeathons and stuff. People are putting them in lawns. Is it appropriate for churches to do the same thing? What What are you thinking about with lawn signs? Man, I love them. I really do. They're they're very economical. Um, we can do some fun things with them, like create custom shapes with them. You know, they don't oh, have to really? be a square. Yeah, we can we can make them a shape if you got a special theme that you're trying to project. We can kind of uh, cut them to that shape and do whatever. But there's there's two ways I think that are most helpful to use them. One is around your church property. Sure. Um, that's an obvious, you know, um, easy way. We like to stagger them maybe every ten feet or fifteen feet apart. Um, if your local laws will let you do that, and sometimes right. they're, they're a little hard on that. But, you know, I think the better way to use it is if you've got the budget to do it, um, you give every person in your church one of these signs to take home and let them put there in their front yard. It's got very simple information such as the date, the time, and the website, and that's it. Um, and maybe some little call to action like join us at such and such church. 
But um, now what you're kind of doing is taking an offline tool and giving it kind of a, a little bit of a viral nature to it because you could be promoting your church Easter service in 100 or 50 or 500 yards. Um, and, and that's a really cool opportunity. And, and here's what's I think really important about that. It also inspires your members and it gives them a chance to be evangelistic. It gives them a chance to let their neighbors know hey, we're Christ followers, we're going to this church. And so it's it's one of those tools that you kind of get a double win out of. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's an easy way. We always tell people to tell your neighbors about it, tell your neighbors about it. And this is a, actually, it's kind of like a lazy way that people can get away with it, but <laughs> probably more effective of getting the word out and then stimulating conversation. When you go out to get your mail or someone sees you walking the dog, it's actually a conversation starter. It, it totally is. And I think that's really what, as leaders uh, in the church, that's one of the things that needs to be on our radar. There's yeah. a lot of tactics that you can kind of, you can do this and that in different churches, you know, things work in different contexts. But the most important thing that I think leaders need to be thinking is, how are we going to equip our members to go invite people in their context? Right. Uh, because, you know, as leaders, we don't know everyone in our community. Um, there's no way we can single-handedly do that. You know, we can do our job from the stage, but we got to get it into the hands of the people and let them go be bold and learn those little baby steps of, of maybe just handing an invite card to somebody and going, you know, would you like to come to Easter with us? For some people, that is a massive, yes. massive thing. Yes. But, you know, it's actually a little tools like that are actually part of us building into their spiritual formation, which is actually kind of a cool process. Nice, nice. Um, as we close out this interview, what's the one thing people should be thinking about in terms of their preparation from East, for Easter? What's the most? What's the one piece of advice for the pastor that's a solo pastor, or maybe one or maybe an assistant pastor? Where most of the churches in this country are are uh, hundred or less, so you're talking about 100, 200 people in the congregation. What is what? What's your advice in terms of planning the the road up to Easter? Uh, what should be their number one concern, or what are they doing right now? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. I think it's kind of related to the last uh, little thing that we were talking about. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do, and our guide will give you lots of ideas. Yeah. Some of them you can afford, some of them you may not be able to. But I think what the one thing, if I were to have a, you know, 500 leaders in the room and go, what's the one thing you need to be thinking about? I don't think it's a necessary uh, a tactic. Yeah. I think it's more of a concept, and the concept is this. How are we going to equip and inspire people to invite their friends to Easter? To me, that's the one thing they need to be thinking about. That could be invite cards. It could be yard signs. It could be billboards. It could be Facebook advertisements. It could be mailers. But whatever it is, we need to be gathering in a room, either with our team or by yeah. ourselves if we're a small church, and just going, how are we going to talk this up and inspire people to go get involved? If, if there's nothing else that we do, you know, we don't have the fancy postcard or we don't have this. There's nothing else we do. We've got to figure out how are we going to equip people and inspire them to get their friend to come to church. Gotcha. That's a good parting words. I really appreciate it. And I think it, it is, that's what the practitioner side in you actually brings out right because it's not yeah. about the tactics it's not about the checklists um it's about something bigger so um thank you so much for the that wisdom and also the practical resource uh remind us where exactly can they get this roadmap download kit yeah it's very really simple our website is churchinc.com slash roadmap that's where we've housed this document you can have it for free it's our gift to you churchinc.com slash roadmap and we'll be glad to answer any questions you got. Our team is standing by all the time for instant chat on our site. And so if we can help you think through that, we'd love to. Awesome. And then if they want to get in touch with you after today's conversation, what's the best way for someone to get in touch with you directly? Yeah, for me personally, probably on Twitter, uh, my handle is at cast your vision. And so uh, that's, the, that's probably the best way they can uh, hit me up and I'll be glad to interact with them and, and coach them through whatever their challenges are. I'd love to. Yeah, I, uh, the one thing I really do love about you and your organization is that it's just um, you're very accessible. Uh, you've been very, very accessible, which is kind of um, 
you would think that's in, in, intention, in, intentional and assumed in all businesses that they're customer service oriented. Um, but I, I would say that one of the things that your support team is is very responsive, and actually, it's even questions that are outside of just you know paper stock and printing and stuff like that. It is about ministry and church. You you are a ministry at heart. So I love the team that you've developed over there, Paul. Yeah, I've got a great team, and I'll tell you, every one of our team members are church people, and so they get it. Gotcha. Well, thank you so much for stopping by for today's Lunch and Learn. I uh, re really need to get you back um, to, uh, I, I want to do a brainstorming session with you to really start to think about what are some innovative ways to use direct mail or other things offline, um, even signage. I think signage is something that churches really need to talk about. So if you would come back a, another time soon for a Lunch and Learn, I, I would love to have that. We'd love it. Thanks, Kenny. I appreciate it. Okay. Have a day, folks. And uh, drop a comment below. Let us Tell us what you learned. Tell us what questions you have. Um, and let us know how you're liking this Lunch and Learn series of our uh, podcast and resource here at the Church Butler. I'm Kenny Jang. Thanks for watching today. Catch you next time here for another Church Butler Lunch and Learn.